From the ancient Mesopotamians to Galileo to Google Maps, humanity has sought to answer a fundamental mystery of our existence. What is at the world's end? What lies beyond the oceans? Is it outer space? A sea of stars, perhaps? <laughs> nah, it's a snake. Big snake, too. That's what the Norse gods would say anyway. And they would know, because they put it there. This snake at the end of the world was named Jormungandr, and was one of three children of Loki and the giantess Engerbara. Unfortunately, Jormungandr and his siblings were prophesied to bring great misfortune to the gods, which is never something you want the gods to hear about you, by the way. So to nip this problem in the bud, Odin, father of all of the gods, picked up Jormungandr and threw him as hard as he could towards the sea. Get out of here, snake, he cried. But Jormungandr did not die. Instead, he lay there in the water, and as he did, he grew. He grew so long and large, he came to encircle all of the earth. A serpent that surpassed the whole world? There could not be a more fearsome and formidable creature. Except, perhaps, for the god who could kill him. Thanks so much to Factor for showing us the great tasting, fast, and fresh meals are no myth. Meet Thor, son of Odin, god of thunder, god of lightning, god of strength, and god of really wanting to beat up that snake. And for him, it all started with a cat. One evening, Thor and his frenemy Loki, deep into a long journey, stopped for a night's rest at the most enormous castle they'd ever seen. And in the crowded great hall was the king, a giant by the name Utgarda Loki. Yes, he was also called Loki, but don't worry about it too much. That's as confusing as the story gets. Utgarda Loki said the only people welcome to stay under his roof were those capable of a craft or cunning surpassing most men. All right, then. I mean, that shouldn't be too difficult for a god, right? Well, Loki thought so anyway. He said he could eat faster than anyone. So Utgarda Loki pitted Loki against a guy called Logi. That's L-O-G-I. Yeah, sorry, this did get more confusing. I mean, I guess it would take a cunning surpassing most men to keep all of these names straight. So look at that, we tied it all together. Nice. Anyway, doesn't matter. In the end, Loki lost. L-O-K-I. Thor then offered to compete in a drinking contest. But try as he might, he couldn't even drain his cup. Maybe you'd be better off with more of a children's game said Utgarda Loki. Here, pick up my cat. That seems more your speed. <laughs> okay, Thor wielded the legendary hammer Mjolnir and could certainly manage to pick up a kitty cat. <laughs> but <clears throat> no! <sighs> he could barely raise one paw. <sighs> <sighs> You've got to understand, this devastated Thor the strongest of the gods, to wipe out so completely in front of a mocking crowd? Wow, just shattered him. I'll fight anyone, he screamed. Come at me. How about an old woman, said Utgarda Loki. You can probably guess how that went. Yep, she came up and put Thor in a chokehold. The gods were humiliated, but maybe because their failures had been so entertaining, Utgarda Loki put them up for the night anyway. The next morning, a miserable Thor told his host he was unhappy. Everyone was going to go around calling Thor a, quote, man of little might now. And might was Thor's whole deal. So Utgarda Loki let Thor in on a secret. By the sublime and all-powerful forces of magic, the gods had been pranked. <laughs> yeah, Loki's opponent in the eating contest was literally fire, right? Oh, and Thor's drinking horn was connected to the ocean. That old lady wrestler, yeah, she was the personification of old age itself. Oh, <laughs> and the cat. Jormungandr, <laughs> cried Utgarda Loki. The world serpent in disguise. <laughs> Honestly, you shouldn't have been able to lift one paw. That kind of scared the hell out of us. Enraged by the deception. But emboldened by his inadvertent show of strength, Thor raised his hammer to the sky. I can lift more than a paw! I am the strongest of all of the gods! And on that day, Thor vowed never to rest until he had one more crack at lifting the whole world serpent. Sometime later, Thor hooked up with the giant Hymir, who, and this is important, had a fishing boat. Thor's intention was to sail out to Jormungandr's domain for a rematch. But he did keep that from Hymir, probably aware that, as goals go, lifting the world serpent doesn't sound that relatable or safe. Hymir thought his buddy was going to help him catch a couple of flatfish, though really there were a few signs that something was amiss. Like, for instance, when Thor dismissed Hymir's bait as not nearly big enough, and then cut off the head of Hymir's biggest ox to use instead. 
Hmm, I think, said Thor, this might do. <laughs> the two then rode out to Hymir's usual fishing spot. Now, can we go out a little farther, friend? Thor asked. Maybe, you know, like, a lot farther? End of the world kind of thing? Hymir said sure, but it would be dangerous to go too far, you know, on account of that whole world serpent thing. Oh, sure! Sure, said Thor. But they did go that far out. Gods usually get their way, after all. Thor pierced the hook with the ox's head and tossed it into the sea. And right away, Jormungandr came snapping out. The serpent snatched the bait and the hook. Then it charged through the open sea, dragging Thor and Hymir along with him. But Thor dug in his heels, and with every ounce of godly might he knew he possessed, he pulled and pulled and pulled on the line! Grrr! Until by might alone, he hauled Jormungandr's enormous head into the boat. The snake hissed. Odious poison spewed from its mouth. Meanwhile, the sea trembled. Heck, the whole world trembled. <laughs> I lifted you, you magnificent bastard! Thor cried. I lifted you! And here's the next part. Yeah, he lifted the serpent all right, but there's always more worlds to conquer, you know? What would they say about a god strong enough to slay the world serpent? Oh yeah, he would love to hear that story sung. But just as he raised his hammer for a death blow, a rightfully terrified Hymir fumbled for his knife and cut the line, setting the serpent loose. Thor roared with despair, watching his victory vanish into the depths of the sea. Oh, he could have done it. He knew he could. And as Hymir began to explain, suddenly Thor just pushed him overboard. Twice now, he'd been denied his glory. Once by magic, and now by this big oaf. His strength had never been proven. Not to his satisfaction, anyway. I mean, what would they say about Thor now? Thor, god of failing to kill big snakes? But the god of thunder would eventually get his moment. Because remember that prophecy of great misfortune that saw Odin throw Jormungandr into the sea in the first place? Well, it came to pass. As Ragnarok, Jormungandr burst from the sea and writhed upon the earth. His noxious venom defiling the air and great earthquakes shattered the land. It was, quite literally, the end of the world. And witnessing this living nightmare, all of the humans threw up their hands and asked, Who was strong enough to take on this- Up, ah, it's me, it's me, nobody else do it! Cried Thor, rushing in, hammer spinning. And with a mighty swing, he bashed out the serpent's brains. Ha <laughs> ha you see! He yelled, You just needed to let me have a go! <laughs> but the god would only live a few more seconds himself. For the air was thick with Jormungandr's lethal poison, causing Thor to keel over and die. This Ragnarok would see many more gods die. The world itself burned, cleansed, and made anew. But it should be noted that Thor's death was a happy one, because he died securing the knowledge that whoever lived in this new world would speak of him as a god capable of craft and cunning surpassing mortal men. A god of thunder, of storms in the sky, of strength and protection, and most importantly, no matter what anyone else might say, a god who could lift a damn cat. <coughs> Whoa there, Zozo! Jeez, if you're mouthing off to a god like that, you gotta be really hungry, huh? Well, luckily, I got the perfect solution. Okay, so with fall finally here, I really want to try and cram as much fun outdoor stuff into my schedule as possible, you know, for the one and a half months where it isn't either blisteringly hot or freezing cold in NYC. But with tons of episodes to work on, conferences to hit, and a very needy kitten, that doesn't leave me with a ton of time to do things like, you know, eat. And sure, I could always order takeout a bunch, but my bank account refuses to support that poor financial decision. And frozen meals just have too many preservatives and taste like I'm playing a cruel joke on my taste buds. Well, this is precisely where Factor comes in to make sure I get the most delicious last laugh. They're my absolute favorite ready-to-eat meal delivery service that takes the guesswork out of my breakfast, lunch, and dinner with every meal ready in two minutes with no prep, no mess, no cleanup, really just great food ready whenever I have time to eat it. Factor's also got this big old rotating menu of over 30 34 delicious, chef-prepared, dietitian approved meal options for you to choose from each week to basically achieve any nutrition goals that you have. Everything from keto, protein plus, veggie, vegan options, calorie smart, which are meals that are around 550 calories or less, and just a whole bunch more. And heck, why not even mix and match between all of those options, like I do, to ensure that everyone in your household gets the exact type of food that they love fast? It's super easy. 
For instance, since I selected a bunch of different options this week, I had a ton to choose from for dinner last night, but I landed on the phenomenal blackened salmon with Cajun tomato gravy and cauliflower grits, and ooh, damn, that fishes was delicious. And because it was just so quick, I then got to use the time I saved to dive back into Baldur's Gate 3 and try to get Lazelle to fall in love with me. Oh wow, turns out she's just really into violence. Eh, the heart wants what the heart wants. I digress. So if you want to eat better while also being better with your time. All you gotta do is head to factor75.com or click the link below and then use the code extra credits 50 to get 50% off your first factor box. Then not only will you be getting fast, tasty meals that fit your lifestyle for a pretty good discount, by the way, but you'll also be helping to support our shows and all the people who make them. Oh, and real quick before we go, I just tried their cold pressed juices and they actually gave the smoothies a run for their money. Once again, that is 50% off your first box at factor75.com and use the code extra credits 50. That's it. That's all I got for you this week. Until next time, happy eating, everybody. Thanks for your legendary patronage, Ahmed Ziad Turk, Angela Valenciana, Arcolite Games, Casey Mustia, Dominic Valenciana, Izzy Coyne, Joseph Blaine, Kuya Koy, and Skylar Holmes. Looking sharp, y'all.